Hi again, this is Roy covering learning objective number two here in chapter one, where we're going to calculate a taxpayer's marginal tax rate. Remember, rates are percentages, usually stated in percentages, and also an average tax rate. We're also going to take a look at a tax formula, an income tax formula. Now, keep in mind that when I'm recording this video, I'm doing it at the end of uh, December 2012. And as of today, the IRS, the federal government, has not come out with a new tax table or tax tables for 2012. What I showed you in Learning Objective 1-1 was the tax rate uh, schedule that's the second to the last page in our textbook. The tax tables is supposed to be in Appendix um, Appendix D at the back of our book. But if you look at that page, all it says is that it wasn't ready as of the date the book was published. So what I'm going to do is to illustrate calculating the marginal rate and the average tax rate using 2011 numbers since the 2012 is not available. Really the 2012 uh, tax tables are not ready. Even though the tax rate schedules is ready for 2012, I'm still going to be using in this examples right now 2011 numbers. Okay, So when 2012 comes available, I'll let you guys know uh, by posting a message in our class website. Okay, so to calculate the average tax rate, again, a rate is going to be a percentage, you get, the, you get the total tax for the whole year. Okay, so you already figured out the taxes for the year, and you divide that by the tax base, and we learned that is our taxable income for the year. And whatever you get, probably a decimal, you convert that to a percentage, and that's your average tax rate. Now, average tax rates are not used to calculate the tax. You first have to calculate the tax, and then you can calculate the average rate. So the average rate is not too practical, at least for our purposes, but it's only used for comparison purposes. Maybe you want to compare your last year's rate with this year's rate, just to see the trend. Or maybe you want to compare one taxpayer's average rate with another taxpayer's rate just to see who's paying the higher rate. And right now in Congress there's lots of debates about increasing the rates, especially for wealthy taxpayers. For example, uh, in the presidential campaign rate it was mentioned that uh, Mitt Romney was paying a, a rate below 15 percent and for most taxpayers they pay more than that. How can that be possible? Well, he pays you know millions of dollars of, of probably of taxes, but because there's special rules for certain types of income, here's the income, it may be taxed at a lower rate, resulting in a low average rate. Okay, so average rates good for only comparison purposes over time to determine a trend whether increasing or decreasing for the same taxpayer or comparing the rates between taxpayers just to see maybe for equity purposes who's paying a higher or lower rate. Now probably what's more valuable for planning purposes, tax planning purposes, is a marginal tax rate again stated in a percentage and really what it says here is how much more taxes you're going to pay, what percent more you're going to pay if you have more income to report. So if I get a raise, the question now is how much taxes I'm going to pay on that additional money I'm going to earn? Well, that additional money is not going to be taxed at the lowest rate. It's not even going to be taxed at my average rate. It's going to be taxed at whatever high rate I'm already in. And again, that's called the marginal rate. And we saw the marginal rate uh, in the previous uh, video when we were looking at the tax rate schedule. okay, Not the tax tables, but the tax rate schedule. So again, that is uh, the, the percentage being applied to the next income I'm going to earn. So here's an example of a tax 
rate schedule but for the year 2011 again the 2012 is not ready as of the time I'm recording this video so let's say you have um, about 75,000 of taxable income for a married filing joint couple well you would look up this taxable income between these amounts here in this first two columns and you can see it falls within right over here so I go across and here is my marginal rate if I were to earn one dollar more seventy thousand and one dollar that extra dollar will be taxed not at 10 or 15 or the average rate for my taxpayer but taxed within this range right here or you're gonna pay 25 cents on this one dollar of additional income and that will be true all the way up to an, uh, an amount that brings you up to this 139,350. Now once you go over that, the marginal rate of 28% will kick in for anything over that limit. Okay, so marginal rates are good to tell you how much more taxes you have to pay above a certain amount you already have. Now likewise, we'll talk about deductions that will reduce your taxable income. So the question is how much taxes are you going to save if you have additional deductions? Well here, if you're in this tax bracket right here and you have a one dollar deduction, you're not going to save one dollar in taxes, you're going to save 25 percent of that one dollar or 25 cents. Or if you have a hundred dollars of deduction, you're going to save 25 dollars. Or if you have a thousand dollars of deduction, you're going to save two hundred fifty dollars. So, marginal rates are good for planning purposes to see how much more or how much less in taxes you're going to be paying. Here is our simplified tax formula, and we're going to start off with all the money you made for the year. Here in chapter one, we're only going to take a look at three different types of taxes. We'll learn more types of income in chapter number three. But the three types of income you're going to learn here in chapter one are wages, the money you earn as an employee working for someone else, and interest income. Maybe you have a bank account, a savings account, a certificate of deposit, and you're earning a low measly uh, less than 1% Manini interest rate. And a third type of income we'll see here in Chapter 1 is unemployment uh, compensation. If you're laid off, maybe you can file for unemployment pay, or sometimes they call it unemployment um, insurance. So you would add up all three types of income and get a total. Then you would subtract out a deduction and based upon whether your filing status is single or married filing uh, joint we have only two filing statuses here in chapter um, chapter one we'll take a look at in terms of a deduction and we'll just be given a dollar amount to deduct here and then the remainder is that tax base we've been talking about that we would then apply the tax rates we saw on the tax rate schedule or really you're supposed to be using the tax table if your taxable income were under a hundred thousand and that's true for most taxpayers they would not be using the tax rate schedule but the tax table that's not ready yet as of uh, late December 2012 but in theory so we saw we multiply by a rate to get the tax for the whole year here called tax liability. Now if you take this taxable income and divide it into taxable income divide it into the tax liability, what you'll get is that average uh, tax rate we talked about. Okay, again you gotta figure out the tax for the year first before figuring out the average rate. If this is a decimal, you've got to convert it into a percent. Now here's the total tax you owe for the whole year from which you're supposed to have been paying taxes during the year. So for most of us who work, the taxes are withheld from our paycheck. Now you get to subtract it out here, tax payments from the total tax liability for the year. You also get to subtract out from this tax liability 
tax credits. And we'll learn more about credits in a future chapter. I believe it's going to be our chapter number nine for the semester. And if you have more tax payments than credits, any excess over the tax liability is an overpayment that you probably want to have refunded to you. Now we don't call this extra that you get back a tax return. The tax return is the actual form, like this is a piece of paper, the 1040 form that you have to file with the government. The paperwork you have to file is called the return. Any money you get back because you overpaid is a refund. Or if your tax payments, withholdings and credits are less than the liability for the year, any difference has to be made up or here a balance due that you, got to, that you have to pay when you file your tax forms, your tax return. Okay, so this is a simplified formula and we'll see a little bit more complex one in a future chapter. So let's take a look at a um, concept check questions. We have concept check questions throughout each chapter. So here is chapter one's number two concept check question. Again, we're applying 2011, 2011 rates here. What is the marginal tax rate for a married couple with taxable income of 69,510? Whenever you try to find the marginal rate, you don't use the tax tables in Appendix D or whatever uh, reference I give you later on. What you do is use the tax rate schedule specifically for that filing status. Again, it's the second to the last page in our textbook. And you would look up this taxable income, going down these two columns, and you can see 69,510 falls within, or is uh, over 69,000, but not over 139,350. So this is the role you got to use, and you go across, and this percentage is your marginal tax rate, 25%. Because if I earn $69,511, that extra dollar is going to be taxed at 25%. All the way up to another, looks like maybe um, 70000 That much? Yeah, 70000 more taxed at 25% your marginal rate. Likewise if I have a deduction each dollar deduction will save me 25 cents. That's marginal rate using the tax rate schedule. Second to the last page in our textbook. Now if you want to figure out let me show you the answer here. Okay, 25% here. Now if you want to figure out the tax for the year Hopefully you'll get the correct uh, tax table. Again, 2012 is not ready. And you have just pages and pages of these tax tables. So just like going down these two columns here, you go down these two columns here, and you find this 69,510 right here. Right here. Okay, It's at least 69,500 but less than 69,550. So you go across the row, this row here, and you stop under the filing status column. In our case, it's married filing jointly. So right here, the intersection of the taxable income row and the filing status column tells you how much tax you have for the year. And this is the true amount you gotta use, assuming we have 2011. And not really the formula here like I showed you in um, the first video. okay, You use the tax rate schedule to calculate out the marginal rate. You use the actual tax to calculate tax by using the tax table if your taxable income like here is under a hundred thousand for the year. Okay, Now I have my tax and if I take my tax 9,631 and divided by my taxable income, my base, the answer should give you the average tax rate. Okay, not the marginal rate, but the average rate. So um, this is the end of chapter two 
um, learning objective 1-2.